In this video, I want to talk about the effect of having small expected frequencies. Now, when we're talking about small expected frequencies, we mean under 5. Okay, That's the general rule of thumb. So what I've got here is four different age groups, uh, under 18s, 18 to 25, 26 to 35, and over 35, and their mobile phone um, contract providers. So we've got 3, EE, O2, and we've got another column as well. So this is what I've observed. Okay, these are the frequencies that I've observed. I've then calculated the expected frequencies, okay, assuming that they were independent, and then I've calculated the contributions. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to focus in on the expected frequencies and you want to question any of these if they are under 5. Okay, it doesn't matter if the observed frequencies are under 5. It only matters if the expected frequencies are under 5. Okay, because essentially the expected frequencies are, are the bit that's informing you that there may well be an issue. And the issue comes because if the expected frequency is small, then think about the calculation that you do. You do the observed frequency, take away the expected frequency squared, and then divide that by the expected frequency. Okay. Now, if the expected frequency is small, the smaller the expected frequency gets, the smaller the denominator gets, and hence the larger the fraction becomes. The larger this becomes, the larger the contribution becomes, because that is the contribution for, that goes into the table. And then, the larger the contribution becomes, the more likely it is that you are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we can actually see that looking at the table that I've got, for example, if we look at the under 18s on the 3 contract, we've got 25 were observed, 31.38 were expected. The contribution is 1.297. Okay, so that is the contribution to the test statistic. Whereas, if we look at uh, the one person that was recorded, who was over 35, who had an O2 contract, their expected frequency was 3.848. So the uh, contribution calculation gets us 2.108. So actually, that difference there is having a bigger effect on our contributions than the 25 versus 31.38 that we've got up there, which doesn't quite seem right. So that's having a larger contribution on this. So how do you get around this? Well, in practicality, um, you would want to do more testing. You would want to go out and collect more data. Okay, But if this was the only data that you had to work with, how can you fix it? What would you do? Well. Um, what you could do is you could think about grouping together um, either a column or a row okay, with another one. So you could, for example, say, OK, well, that's where my um, expected frequency is under 5. Um, so really, I want to get rid of the over 35 row. Now, what you could do is you could then, OK, well, I could group together over 35 and 26 to 35. I could bring that data together, and that should eliminate the problem. The only issue that you might have with that is the, the consequence is that you would then have over 25 here. This would be a grouping called over 25, which you might deem as being far too big a group to consider. So that is quite a large age group. OK, so that might seem like a, a, a poor idea. You do, have another, you do have an alternative. You could group together the O2 column with the other column. So you could bring those two together. And that would seem more reasonable. Maybe we thought we would get more customers um, who were on the O2 contract. So we had it as a, we were collecting that data. But it turned out that we didn't get so many, so actually we'll bring it into the other group, and then that will get rid of the small expected frequency for us. Okay? Essentially, 
uh, were trying to minimize the likelihood of rejecting the null hypothesis if um, you know our data doesn't support it. Okay, we don't want to kind of get an error in our results. So that's how you can get around um, these small expected frequencies. Consider joining up and grouping together either two rows or two columns. It depends on the context of the problem as to which one of those two options will be the better. Um, but be aware you are always looking to see uh, whether there are expected frequencies less than five. Doesn't matter about observed frequencies, it's the expected frequencies you want to keep an eye out for.